Can you come up and pray for us? Yeah, you. So many Michaels. Michael Bong. <laughs> Father, I thank you for this man of God, Lord. I thank you that you've, uh, you've been inspiring him, giving him words to speak to us, Lord. I thank you for the preparation he's put into this, Lord. And Lord, I, I thank you that um, you are his father, Lord, and our father, and Lord, that you want to speak to him and to us. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you guys so much for just uh, actually for sticking with us through this interesting time. Sometimes you talk to people in our building or whatever, people that don't come here and, and uh, they say, oh, yeah, we went to church. You know, a lot of people now go to church, you know that. So, so how was church today? And they go, oh, you know, same old, same old. Well, we don't have same old, same old. Ours is an adventure and could be for the next several months. And so... Just a tiny little update on that. It's been, we have been working, despite evidence to the contrary, in finding a place to meet. And um, being summer, this is, a, this is great that we could meet outside. But it also means that a lot of board members and a lot of leaders in different churches are on holidays various times. And so it's been hard to get an answer on trying to find a Sunday morning meeting place um, where we can, where we will be gathering as soon as we have located one, and it'll be different. It won't be that, and it won't be this. It'll be something completely different again. So we won't have, it won't be the same old for quite a while. So it, it, yeah, so uh, we have a one place possibility you could keep in your prayers. They're having a board meeting on Tuesday, and going to discover or de decide whether we can use their space or not. So, as I was uh, thinking earlier this week about what to share about and asking God about it, he, he just, I said, what, what should be the, the topic? And he said, keep on loving. So oh, that's pretty easy. That's, uh, he said, oh no, mine it a little bit. Dig in, find out what I have said about loving and what it looks like and what it means. And in, and I hope that you will be encouraged today to find more ways to express your love. And, yeah, well, we'll just get into it because the Word of God is, has an answer for all of that, has so many answers on what it looks like to love. First of all, of course, we're told to love. Jesus said, love God with everything you have and love your neighbor as yourself, right? And that fulfills all the law and the prophets. So Hebrews 13.1 says, keep on loving each other as brothers and sisters. And that was the first verse he kind of led me to. And it, it gave, what I got was keep on, keep on. Okay, so we have in the past, keep it up. And what I'm going to hoping to encourage you today is to keep up, love, keep on loving and to keep on finding new ways and new, new ways to express love. Because love is more than I love you, isn't it? It's, it's a lot more than that. That's a good start. But I think sometimes we glibly say that and think our duty is done. No, not at all. So, Jesus commands us to love each other. And he has set the example in John 15, 12. It says, this is my commandment that you love. And unselfishly seek the best for one another just as I have loved you. Just as. So, it, you know, in the, in, he's inviting us to look at his example and to follow, have our lives fall in line with his example. When we want to know how to love, let's, Jesus said, love like I do. Love the way I do. So we're going to look at that. And a footnote in my Bible just says, the key to understanding this and other statements about love is to know that the Greek word agape used here is not so much a matter of emotion. It's not so much a matter of emotion as it is of doing things for the benefit of another person. That is, having an unselfish concern for another and a willingness to seek the best for another. So, Jesus also said that when you love one another the way I have loved you, this, will, this is how everyone will recognize that you are my disciples when they see the love you have for each other. How are they going to see it? 
how are people going to see the love that we have for each other? Is it because we walk around all the time, every time we see each other? Oh, I love you. I love you, Mike. Is that, is that, is that going to, I'm going to miss you. But don't worry. Turn your phone off for everyone but me, okay? Yeah. <laughs> is it just because we said things? It's because they observe how we live. They observe our lifestyle. And we are to be a people who, when people observe our lifestyle, they go, wow, I'd love to be a part of that. Are we attractive? Are we a people whose lifestyle, if, if somebody, you know, those who are closest to us, our neighbors maybe, or our friends, see what we do on a, on a regular basis, see, see how we live, does that attract them? Because that's what Jesus wanted. He wanted our lifestyle, our community life, to be such that people go, I want to be part of that. I want to be a part of that. In, in 1 Thessalonians, Paul is uh, talking to the church there, and he's saying, you need to know, friends, that I'm thanking God over and over for you. It's not only a pleasure, it's a must. We have to do it. Your faith is growing phenomenally. Your love for each other is developing wonderfully. Why, it's only right we give thanks. We're so proud of you. You're so steady and determined in your faith, despite all the hard times that have broadsided you. We tell everyone we meet in the churches all about you. Sometimes I wonder what people say about us when we're not around, right? Say about the river. I hope that they would have good things to say. I hope that they would see how we function, how we, maybe how we stick together when things aren't exactly going our way. Maybe, maybe that, but yeah, we are to be an attractive group. So let's look at some truths about love. God sees and takes note of our acts of love. Did you know that? It kind of sounds like a no-brainer, but think about that. God, sometimes when we say, oh, God is watching you, it's more like a warning. Like, uh oh, better not do that bad thing. God is watching us. But God is watching us all the time. God is with us all the time. And he takes note of the things that we do. Hebrews 6.10. God is not unjust. He will not forget how hard you worked for him and how you have shown your love to him by caring for other believers as you still do. So when we're out caring for other believers, God is taking note. We are showing our love to the people, whoever it is, but we're also showing our love to him. You have shown your love to him by caring for other believers. So God takes note of our acts of love. Love is actually the proof of being a believer. Did you know that? 1 John, verse 3, says, This is the message you heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. If we love our brothers and sisters who are believers, it proves that we have passed from death to life. Wow. You want proof that you're a Christian? Do you love the community? Do you love your brothers and sisters? In this case, it says. He goes on to say, so it proves we have passed from death to life. But a person who has no love is still dead. Dear children, let's not merely say that we love each other. Let's show the truth by our actions. Our actions will show we belong to the truth. So we will be confident when we stand before God. So are our words what give us confidence? Or is it our actions? Our actions of love can give us confidence. When, when we stand before God, you know, and some great man of God who's, who might forgot who made this quotation, but he said he had a, a dream one time where he had died and was standing before God, and he was hoping to pull out, you know, hoping that God had the videos of all the great sermons he did and whatever, and, and all the, you know, all the, uh, all the times he had forgiven and all this. And he said, the first question God asked him is, did you learn how to love? Because you see, God is love. And those who are children of God will naturally, more and more and more, it's a process, learn how to love the way he loves. Another truth about love is how much we love shows how much we know God. I know the, you know, it might sound like a no-brainer, but I'm just quoting you from the scripture that, that God 
pointed me to in how to determine if we are living a life of love. So listen, 1 John 4, verse 7 says, Dear friends, let's continue to love each other, for love comes from God. Anyone who loves, say anyone. Anyone who loves is a child of God and knows God. But anyone who does not love does not know God, for God is love. So do we all love perfectly 100% of the time? Anybody out there? No, no hands. Oh, somebody was just scratching their face. Okay. <laughs> We're learning, aren't we? So the more we know God, you know, we, we think to know God, oh, I should memorize scripture and I should, you know, listen to worship music and read my Bible. And yes, we should do all those things. What he really wants us to do is to take on his nature and his personality and his character, which is love. And we're going to talk more about what that looks like. But it says, anyone who does not know, does not love, does not know God. So we do not know God yet perfectly if we find areas of our life where we cannot or have decided not to love. Even when we're prompted and we know what we should be doing. Anybody? Anybody ever been prompted to, yeah, that would be something I want you to do, and then not done it? Oh, dear. Yeah. So... Another truth about love, God's love is brought to full expression in us. Did you know that? God's love is brought to full expression in us as we learn to love. Again in 1 John, dear friends, since God loved us that much, we surely ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love each other, God lives in us and his love is brought to full expression in us. Isn't that interesting? See, again, love is not just words, it's actions. So when people see our actions or, or take, you know, and enjoy something that we've done that shows love, that's actually the love of God being expressed. We might want to take credit for it, but we'll talk about that in a minute too. But love is, his love is brought to full expression in us. If we love, it says, if we love each other. So love is so much more than verbal expression. It's not surface. First Peter 1.22 says, you must show sincere love to each other as brothers and sisters. Love each other deeply with all your heart. Nothing half-hearted about it. He doesn't want half-hearted, namby-pamby, beige, you know, eh, well, when I feel like it. He says, love each other deeply deeply with all your heart. Another truth is we can always get better at loving. Isn't that good news? Yeah. First Thessalonians 4, 9 says regarding life together and getting along, you don't need me to tell you what to do. You're God taught in these matters. Just love one another. You're already good at it. Your friends all over the province of Macedonia are the evidence. I hope that's true of us. Our friends all over Abbotsford are, are, are the evidence that we're learning how to love. But then he ends the verse by saying, keep it up, get better and better at it. I want to get better. Anybody else want to get better at loving God and, lo and loving each other? Okay, let's work, up, work on some practical expressions of love. Because we've talked about how it's so much more than talk, it's actions. So here's some actions we can take. Practical expressions. Hebrews 13.1 Stay on good terms with each other, held together by love. Be ready with a meal or a bed when it's needed. Some have even extended hospitality to angels without ever knowing it. Anybody ever had that experience where you go, who was that person? So obviously, in this case, if, if somebody actually entertained an angel without knowing it, that means they provided hospitality to someone they did not know. Because a lot of times Pam thinks I'm an angel, but it, I'm not actually, because she knows me, she lives with me, all right? But the scripture says if you, if you sort of accidentally or without knowing it, actually entertained and showed hospitality to an angel, that's somebody you didn't know. So it's not just people that we that do good things for us, let's say, or whatever. It's actually 
could even be to people we don't know. Then he goes on in Hebrews, regard prisoners as if you were in prison with them. Wow, that's something, isn't it? But that's a practical expression of love. Another version says, look on victims of abuse as if what happened to them had happened to you. Wow. Practical expressions. What does love look like? So, so often we can go, oh, I'm so sorry that happened to you. Um, you know, like it, it, it happens to us because we're, we're pastoring. People will phone us. Sometimes, thank you. Sometimes different times. You're welcome. Sometimes, you know, several times a day somebody can phone us or email us or text us. Oh, this really good happened. And then somebody, oh, that really bad happened. Um, you know, can you pray for me? And it, sometimes it can go all over the place like a roller coaster with your emotions if you're like a burden bearer or whatever. I, I'm glad that Pam is, is more tuned into that and I, I just sort of cruise along, you know, like, yeah, having a bad time. Well, that's too bad, you know. I'm, let's talk about the person who's having a good time. But it says here, look on victims of abuse as if what happened to them had happened to you. Wow. So, another one. Make sure you don't take, this is in Hebrews 13 as well. Make sure you don't take things for granted and go slack in working for the common good. Share what you have with others. So, are we getting the idea that practical expressions of love are more about actions? That's what we're hoping to drum into you this time. And to you to think in your own life, how could I, how could I share, or am I? How could I share what I have with others? What do I have that I need or don't need? Doesn't really matter. We're not only asked to share our surplus all the time. Sometimes we share, especially when it comes to our time, sometimes we share even things that are really important to us when we're asked to, and that's an expression of love. The message says it this way, God takes particular pleasure in acts of worship, a different kind of sacrifice that take place in the kitchen and the workplace and on the street. There you go. So it can be anywhere, not just in church. You don't have to go, oh, it's Sunday morning. I guess I better put on my loving smile and show up at church and hug a bunch of people and tell them I love them and all that. God takes particular pleasure when we show acts of love in the kitchen, in the workplace, and on the streets. Then it says another way to show love, practical way to show love, is... In 1 Thessalonians 5, gently encourage the stragglers. Sometimes we get impatient with stragglers, don't we? Like, come on. You know, you've been straggling now for 15.5 years. It says, be patient. Gently encourage. It says, reach out for the exhausted, pulling them to their feet. Be patient with each person. Say, each person. Wow. Wow. Attentive to individual needs. And here's a good one. I do love the message. So funny the way it puts things. It says, and be careful when you get on each other's nerves that you don't snap at each other. Look for the best in each other and always do your best to bring it out. When, you get, when people get on your nerves. Anybody ever, ever have a time when somebody got on your nerves? Yeah. Well, you're, the, the recommendation here, a practical way to show love, is for you to be careful and don't snap at them. Sometimes holding back what you're really thinking and feeling is a practical expression of love. See, there's all kinds of different ways. Carrying on in Philippians 2, it says, Agree with each other, love each other, be deep-spirited friends. Don't push your way to the front. Don't sweet-talk your way to the top. Put yourself aside and help others get ahead. Don't be obsessed with getting your own advantage. Forget yourself long enough to lend a helping hand. You're not all that. 
in a bag of chips. You're just another son or daughter of our Father who is in heaven, as everyone else here is and a lot of other people that you know. And our job is not to be, to, to put down any time we have the thought that somehow we're better than or more important than. And so, you know, to budge in line and take the first place and, you know, especially when pizza comes, you know, <laughs> now everyone will be hesitant to be the first one up, but because uh, you're showing love, right? By not pushing, getting your own advantage. Forget yourself long enough to lend a helping hand. I love this one in Romans 12. It says, love each other with genuine affection and take delight in honoring each other. That's another expression, a practical expression of love. Take delight in honoring each other. Wow. And then in Romans 14, it says, let's agree to use all of our energy in getting along with each other. How many know that sometimes it takes all your energy to get along with people? Yeah? Yeah. Sometimes it even takes more than all the energy that you have. It's all right. You can repent and, you know, get right with God again later. But let's agree to use all of our energy in getting along. That's a practical expression of love. Help others with encouraging words. Don't drag them down by finding fault. You know, Pam was particularly, um, uh, had to particularly guard her mind against people who had gone through various surgeries and said, oh, you're going to be in so much pain. Oh, thank you. Now I'm really looking forward to this. You know, <laughs> so, I mean, it's something that needed to be done. And yes, there is some pain and she's struggling with it. But it wasn't, it didn't help her in preparation for people to be telling her how painful it would be. I remember another, another story she uh, tells sometimes about, um, you know, when a woman's pregnant and somebody else has to come along and they've never had it. You know, this pregnant person, this is their first child, and someone has to come along and tell you, oh, let me tell you, when I, I was in agony. It was brutal. Uh, you know, well, thanks. That's, that really encourages me, you know, to carry on with this most natural of things that could happen physically to us. And so, yeah, so be encouraging. Don't drag people down by sharing your insight sometimes and your wisdom. That is a practical aspect of love. And the last one on that is Ephesians 4, verse 4. It says, be alert at noticing differences and quick at mending fences. How many of you, have, like me, have ever put off mending a fence? You know, what happens if you don't mend a fence? Stuff gets in that you don't want, and it, or stuff gets out that you want it to stay in. And be quick at mending fences. I wish we could really understand that that is a way that we show our love, is to mend fences quickly. So, a summary of love in action. Practical, practical uh, areas. Provide basic needs. Empathize with people. Share what you have. Be an encourager. Be patient. Help others to get ahead. Take delight in honoring. And use all of our energy in getting along. Be alert at noticing difference, differences and quick at mending fences. So lastly, the attitude to take while acting in love. Ephesians 5, 2, talking about Jesus, it said he didn't love in order to get something from us, but to give everything of himself to us. Love like that. That's, how, that's what the Word of God encourages us. Again, to use the example of Jesus. He didn't love in order to get something out of us. So sometimes when we love somebody, it's to get something out of them. And so the attitude that we have in showing practical examples, practical actions of love, is not to get something out of them, but to give ourselves to them. And also Ephesians 4 Verse 2 says, I don't want any of you sitting around on your hands. So you're sitting right now, but not too many sitting on your hands. So that's good. <laughs> I don't want anyone strolling off down some path that goes nowhere. And mark that you do this with humility and discipline, not in fits and starts, but steadily pouring yourselves out for each other in acts of love. Acts of love. I like it. He, he, he sort of summarizes the attitude in which we need to 
approach acts of love, and that's with humility, as I just talked about, and with discipline, not in fits and starts. Not just if I feel like it, or if everything's going great for me, but with discipline, steadily pouring ourselves out. And lastly, I lied before I said that was last. This is last. I lie sometimes, I'm sorry. Benefits, especially when I'm preaching. Benefits of acts of love. God keeps track. Our reward is certain, and so we can, we can stay sharp. I want to read you this whole passage, part of which I read earlier, but it's in uh, Hebrews 6. It says, God is not unjust, for he will not forget how hard you have worked for him and how you have shown your love to him by caring for other believers, as you still do. Our great desire is that you will keep on loving others as long as life lasts in order to make certain that what you hope for will come true. Then you will not become spiritually dull and indifferent. The Amplified says spiritually sluggish. Instead, you will follow the example of those who are going to inherit God's promise because of their faith and endurance. Sometimes I have felt spiritually dull. Anybody? Sometimes I felt sluggish. But God said, if we with humility and discipline, continue to steadily have practical expressions of love. If we continue in that way, in showing, in, in, so God's love, God's love is being expressed through us, then we will not become spiritually sluggish or dull. Instead, we will follow the example of those who are going to inherit God's promises because of their faith and endurance. I want to be that person. I want the river to be that church where people, you know, I mean, it's not like we go giving our acts of love with a trumpet, you know, hey, look at us. But if people just notice us in the course of our life with the stream, with the spirit cafe, with church, with, you know, the different things that we do around the community, if we, if people notice ask anything about us, I hope they notice that we love each other and that we look after each other and that we care for others and that we honestly and sincerely do, not to gain an advantage, but to just give ourselves, as God says. Amen? I don't know if in, uh, I was really challenged as I was studying this and I don't know if, if anybody here is challenged by that, but we're going to end with that and I know we've had the prayer people up already once, but if they could come up again, that'd be awesome. And uh, I don't know when the pizza's coming. If it's another half an hour, I, I got a few. I got a few more uh, thoughts. I, no, no, maybe not. Okay. <laughs> Acts two, and Peter preached for a very long time. I like Peter. Yeah, come on up, prayer, prayer people, and. If something of that moved you, if you've been slow at mending fences, if you've been, you know, like uh, any of these aspects, if you can grow in empathy, empathizing with people who are going through struggles, if you can grow in patience, if you have, if you struggle in honoring people, Paul said to the Romans, delight in honoring each other and pouring honor where honor is due. If you need to grow in that area, come up and just have somebody agree with you in prayer. Also, of course, as usual, if you need prayer for anything else, please come up as we close. So, Father, thank you for this morning. Thank you that once again we have an outdoor space that we can use without the threat of rain. Thank you, God. Thank you that you are working out all things for our good because we love you. Thank you that this congregation will meet, this community will meet in various places over the next months.